Test, test, can you hear me? Yep. Oh man, sure. So we we gonna give it a second, man. We we see if we can get about about two to three people, man, by the grace of God up in here, man, to, to see if they can chime <laughs> in on oh, man what we about to talk about. So uh welcome back to the Brian Turner Basketball Podcast, man. And I had to man call up, man. I got a special guest on this episode, man, one of my good friends. Man, we go way, way back. And when I looked and I saw the date that they were going to be doing the Malice in the Palace, and I had to think to myself, man, what was I doing back in 2004? Uh, man, probably, man, man, kicking it with this guy. Man, man, going hard in practice almost every day, man, getting ready for the season. And, uh, man, I said, man, it's only right for me to, man, reach out to Sly Willis of SIU Basketball to kind of talk, man, talk to talk with me, man. And, and let's do this little review, man, from the Malice in the Palace. And, I literally, man, when I saw that they came out with the episode, I said, I'm going to give it a minute because I'm the type of person that I don't like to, uh, you know, once you hear all of the hype from something, man, you 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 getting it from so many different directions. And it's like letting it kind of just settle and then getting a, a time to break it down and not being swayed by opinion in, in this way, that way. But then talk to somebody, man, that really, really know basketball. That where we can chop it up, man. We've been in a foxhole together. So a lot of these different things that come up, man, I feel like we can relate to it, you know. Um, not to the point where we jumping in the stands, but to the point where, um, man, that, that brotherhood, man, that bond between, um, you know, players versus the other team, knowing, you know, what's at stake, and then just kind of just being there for each other. So, man, just to start right off the bat, man, I want to introduce everybody, man, to Sly Willis. Um, Sly, man, how you doing, man? I'm good, Brian, man. Thanks for having me on, man. I know we talked about doing something, man. So yep. glad we finally was able to link up, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before we get going, man, let's just uh, let's just talk about, man, what, what's going on, man, in your world, man, when it pertains to just like, you know, basketball, um, athletics, health, man. I think we, we had a certain age to where physically, man, you know, uh, uh, you know, aged and kind of caught up with us. But I know deep down inside, man, basketball, man, is, is, is our, you know, our passion and our love. So uh, at, at, at the age of, cause how do you? Thirty nine? You forty? How do you? I'm forty. I just just made the turn over. I just I just crossed the. Uh, yeah. I, I just took the baton. You know what I'm saying? So right, right man. So what, what's going on in your world, man? When it's pertaining to like basketball, when it's pertaining to athletic sport, like like what what is your day to day? What is your life like at forty? The the forty year old Sly Willis. Well, you know, for a while, you know, obviously, you know, COVID kind of really. Sh- changed up uh you know my routine in terms of like athletics and all that stuff but i was playing maybe like a couple times a week you know i I still got that passion uh just to play and um you know once COVID hit like some of the gyms and stuff in our area kind of shut down for a little bit and you know my my passion kind of manifested itself in the running man like i i was just wanted to keep my mind busy i i knew that you know with the not having the ability to play like five on five you know, I just didn't want, you know, my weight to get out of control, just being a an adult with, you know, three kids and just living life. So I knew I wanted to stay active. So I kind of just started running and, you know, almost Forrest Gump style, you know, went out one day and took a, <laughs> took a jog and, you know, <laughs> kind of just started building on that. So, mm-hmm. you know, right now that's probably just in terms of like what I really do in terms of staying active and just to stay fit and, you know, just, you know, try to just get out there and run, uh, you know, I, Kind of, I see a little personal trainer, so just to try to, you know, kind of build, uh, you know, kind of keep a little my strength up, or core strength or whatever. Mm-hmm. Nothing too crazy, you know. But you know, at, at our age, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, just maximize my my long term health. You know, yeah, nah, um, you know, I got kind of a, a philosophy. You know, you know, in your 50s and 60s, a lot of people suffering from what they did to their bodies in their 30s and 40s. And so, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm preparing for the future, so to speak. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, I, and I, can, I can second that motion, too, because uh, um, I had to make that transition over to, to you know, I, I love running. And I was the type of person, and I think back to when we were in college, man, I, you know, Coach Watson, man, you know, if, if you got that call that you had to run with Coach Watson early in the morning, you weren't looking forward to that because, man, he was in his, right. you know, 50s, man, out running everybody, but... I didn't really appreciate it to where, you know, we had even it was some professors that I would see out there early in the morning working out um, right before we worked out. And these, these guys were in their 70s. 
And so I'm just thinking like, man, mm-hmm. like how can you get a workout in just running? So it was kind of like, you know, a sport that, you know, I didn't really, you know, appreciate until adulthood to where it's like, you know, you, you that constant, you know, nine to five, you working at some point, you just w- would like to get, man, 15 minutes of cardio in. So what are you yeah, going to yeah. do during that time, man? People take off running and, and it's, it's, if you can't consider yourself an athlete, man, you may, you may have to run somewhere. So if you don't, mm-hmm. if you don't exercise that muscle into running or just, you know, it may be a situation where you may have to just break and take off. And if you ain't did it, man, I guarantee, man, you, you'll be feeling bad about yourself. Don't pull you something. Just, you're going to pull right. something. You're going to, I'm telling you, you're like, yeah. <laughs> ain't no if ands or buts. Like, you can't. You can't just take off and do it, but like you see, you know, I make sure I stretch. I get, I stretch ice. I'm, it's a, it's a process. I'm not going to even front. It's, but you know, when I, when I think about like some of just the one, the, you know, I think you know, right now we talk about mental health, like, but I think like actually it's a, it's a big kind of you know, icebreaker or you know, really, really, you know, kind of help me escape and just you know deal with some of the stuff in life. Or I can just go out run for. 20, 30 minutes, escape, think, collect my thoughts, mm-hmm. you know, and then begin yeah. my day. So, nah, nah, that, that's 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 the truth. Because, like I said, I, I I was able to do that stuff too, to where, um, you know, I always I, I I didn't want my health, my my weight to get out of control. So when yeah. you start to see guys that run that that lean look, you know what I'm saying? You want to have that mm-hmm. lean look where you running, like you know what I'm saying? Like like people have you have that swimmer's look, you can have that mm-hmm. lean running look where you just know, man, that guy, you know. He can run. He dedicate himself to doing something, and not just like you said, man. We when we get up in age, man, our health is is really what we have because we we yeah. work for our family, for our wives, for our kids, and we can't be looking around and, and can't jog and can't run with our kids because yeah. you know d- daddy just overweight or can't you know can't do this or can't do that. Right. So, nah. That's and you know, I also kind of you know took it into, you know, kind of monitor my diet a little bit too. Like, you know, eliminating like, sh- you know, sugary drinks and, you know, just, you know, I, I make a joke, but just stop eating until I'm sleepy. Like, you know, what's the point of, you know, about that, man. getting the itis, man, talk about <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, you know like, like I ain't got to be, when, when you I ain't got to be full. You fall asleep after you ate it. It's just like, man. oh man, I, I shouldn't have did that, you know. <laughs> every day like it's you know maybe thanksgiving or you know christmas or holiday you know weekend here in labor day or something but man if you're doing that every day like that's you know that's just putting you know undue stress on your body so yeah so i mean i, I want to kind of transition that into uh you know like just 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 working out staying in shape you know being around the game about or making the transition to where we can't play like we want to play back how we when we grew up, we have to find other outlets and other ways to, uh, you know, have some type of cardio in our life, some type of exercise in our life. But h- how close are you to the product that's out there right now, whether if it's college basketball, high school basketball? Because you, you live in the Chicago area, so Chicago is uh, basketball is king up there. So what is it like as far as the landscape of basketball in the Chicago area? Um. Well, you know, like uh, I'm probably – I'm. I'm pretty in tune with like the high school scene, but uh, you know, like this past year, we really didn't get a real season. I mean, they, they you know, they had a, a kind of abbreviated season in the spring, so which would probably be like after, you know, like the normal basketball season. Um, like I said, uh, you know, I uh, I play with you know a couple coaches and actually, you know, uh, a couple guys in my family. You know, they coach high school here, so like I said, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, really in tune with that. Like. Uh, you know, I just enjoy kind of seeing, um, you know, like kids in the area just like pick up the game. Like that's kind of a, you know, just a joy of mine. Like not, you know, who knows what they end up being if they are a high major prospect or they gonna go on, to, you know, they may not even go on to play in college, but it's just like when you see, you know, you at the gym and you just see a kid like, you know, you can almost see it in their eyes. Like they kind of picking up the ball for one of the first times and just, you know, like really like, man, you know what, I, I like this or, you know, I want to see what I can do with this. and. Um, so, you know, like, I, I like that aspect of it. Uh, you know, right now though, it's, you know, these kids are so kind of advanced of what they're doing to prepare, you know, like, you know, when, when I was coming up, you know, I just played and, but you know, now like, you know, I go in the gym and I see a kid with cones and, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He, you know, they, I mean, they, they putting in like real skill work and, and I guess it's, you know, I don't know if it's, 
it's you know good in one hand bad in the other because you know because they don't play at all yeah, but i mean i just like, think it's so much like we in the information age and just think like just the yeah. access to be able to see those workouts just think like when we were in high school or right. college we didn't really have that access i mean the 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 whole internet was 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 fairly young, you know, at the time, especially when it came to the videos and just the access of being able to see what these guys were doing on a on a regular workout. Um, and it's like if you didn't really get it secondhand from your coaches in college, you didn't really know what other guys were doing in their spare time as far as working on their game or doing this yeah. and getting that like that exclusive look. Now these kids, man, there's nothing to scroll on instagram you know follow folks and, and get a whole workout follow this person get a whole workout and then the trainers have stepped their game up to the point where if they know they're associated with certain agents they already given those these elite guys those free workouts with you know anticipation to all right you're gonna pay it forward once you get to this level i right, i got you now we're gonna start a whole little mm -hmm. curriculum and you one of my guys and so i just think these kids have so much access man to to so much stuff to where um, bringing it back full surface to even this whole documentary and it's just kind of like it's funny that you know when I ask kids at school man had, 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 had they seen it a lot of folks hadn't really paid attention to what the malice in the palace was because I think to a degree you know I don't know if it was the NBA or certain television stations just tried to you know wipe that out all together because they didn't mm -hmm. really want that image out there you know would, would, right. you, I mean, would, you, would you say that that was pretty much what was going on for like the last at least for 10 years after it happened we we coming up on what man it happened back in 2000 it's about a good 15 yeah good 15 16 years ago mm -hmm. and uh i mean obviously i'm and i'm sure it was purposely done you know the league tried to do his you know his best to distance itself from just that that incident um sweep it under the rug uh per se um you know even you know the documentary talks about like some of the changes that it tried to make you know just to try to quote, quote unquote clean up his image mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think it's done like a, a pretty good job. You know, um, the league has grown so much since then. I mean, I felt like it was at a good place, you know, before that time or at that time. But, you know, just with the, I mean, I guess with the LeBron James effect, if you want to just be candid, you know, you, you figure he's a rookie in 2003. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as his career progresses and he becomes what he becomes, I think the league, you know, kind of takes on, you know, a different view in the public eye. Like, I, you know, I really think he had, you know, a, a big, a, you know, a big play, a big part in that. And, you know, um, like I said, I mean, you know, we'll get into the documentary, but, you know, they, you know, they really, really, you know, tried to, in terms of what, you know, the punishment for the guys involved and, you know, some of the, some of the things they put in place, rules and regulations to really try to, you know, uh, straighten up his image, so to speak, you know, to make it more palatable to the public. So, before we get before we jump into this, if, if you're watching this on the replay, if you're watching it live, if uh, just so happy you stumble across this video, man, hit the like button and the subscribe button um, uh, to this channel. Um, I'm trying my best to grow this and, and get more of this information out because not only am I doing podcasts like this, but we're talking about, you know, sports and, and basketball from all angles. But uh, having interviews with certain coaches, different aspects of people programs, even some some uh some candid information and, and conversations with some legendary coaches so uh i want these videos to get recommended more so the only way to, uh, that we can do that is you got to hit the like button uh and the share button you know make a comment do anything uh of those sorts to try to grow this video out there so um so just like just jumping right into it so the the way that the the documentary kind of started off it kind of just gave you the landscape of you know where where the game was as far as uh, uh, doing this time, basically going back to where I guess 2003 when uh, even at, at the beginning stages of like Detroit when they were babies and even the Pistons, um, just going back to those days, just kind of talk to us a little bit about uh, what did you see at the beginning part of the documentary that that kind of caught your eye right off the start. Um, I guess initially I didn't realize I guess how. Or I, I kind of forgot how good Indiana was. Like um, I knew about Detroit, I knew they was coming off the championship, but like I didn't realize like the year before that um, they played, you know, Indiana in the Eastern Conference Finals. And um, I guess maybe that that previous year Indiana had the best record in the league. Like I just, you know, I I really forgot all about that. You know, um, just you know my own personal recollection. I just remember, you, you know, Detroit going up against the Lakers, who I believe. Um, 
they didn't um i know i think they you know like they was kind of the early uh that was one of the first uh kind of uh, assemblies of one of the super teams i think whatever they had uh carl uh, old carl malone and gary payton around with Shaq and kobe and so like a lot of people maybe thought that they would just kind of run away you know run through the season um also they was you know piggybacking off of uh I think they didn't win the, the previous year in 2003, maybe San Antonio did, but I think those three years before that or something like that, uh, the couple of years before, you know, they won three in a row. So they were still kind of in dynasty mode. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, nobody expected, you know, Detroit. They can't, yeah, like, they kind of came out of nowhere because it's just like one of those things where, you know, you can kind of pinpoint, okay, who basically in the Western Conference, because I mean, that, that talk was still around as far as like, you know, the championship got to come out of the West, basically based off those right. dynasties with LA. And then you, when you, when they uh, uh, have that, that form, that super team where, you know, you, you looking at, you like, Oh man, Carl Malone, if he can just be whatever he was when he was in Utah and Gary Payton, if he could be this, like, man, they can just be stacked for greatness. And then you kind of forget mm -hmm. just the turmoil that the Lakers had within itself with just, you know, Phil Jackson may be leaving Shaq and Kobe don't get along with each other. And so a team mm -hmm. like that, how tight those guys were to where they were like the underdogs because that team was so balanced. That that Detroit team, you really couldn't pinpoint who was the the star of the team. Rip, yeah, Rip would get his buckets, but then you got defensive player of the year. You got a Chauncey Billups making big shots. Shit, think about Tayshawn Prince blocking a shot, going yeah. from a right, smacking it right off the glass from Reggie Miller. So. That was Reggie, yeah. Exactly. So it's like right off the bat, you know, Reggie kind of knew that, okay, time is ticking. What are we going to do with trying mm -hmm. to build up a team for me to be on my way out? And that, that was his 18th season. Like that that's just yeah. crazy that, that he could play, you know, that long and still at, at, the, at the end with one team trying to search for that championship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they was – um. It was just like it was just real interesting just to see that dynamic. You brought up like the Tayshawn Prince thing, like just to to see the history. Like I didn't realize like before that before that play before that game that you know these teams that the two teams had this kind of history of you know just a uh, like a kind of a budding rivalry. Like you figure it was probably building to be you know kind of the you know their version of maybe uh, Celtics uh, Sixers or something like that. Or, you know what I mean? So um, it was just something I didn't know you know prior to the video. Yeah, so I think when they when they opened up the uh, going into the, the that season, um, they were kind of just talking about you know uh, uh, two weeks before they met, you know uh, you know the Pistons had kind of uh, knocked knocked Indiana around, and so everybody was kind of anticipate just going into that game, and they talk about just the additions of the guys that they ended up getting with the trades, you know, going back to the history of a Jermaine O'Neal, how he ended up mm -hmm. in Indiana, and then going back to uh, Ron Ortez, you know, how he ended up there and then making that 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 big steal and, and at the time thinking that Steven Jackson was that extra piece that they needed to quote unquote go young to get ready for how mm -hmm. physical Detroit were going to be when they met them. So it was just kind of like you can kind of see the league changing in that aspect to where you started getting all of these blue chip type guys, hard nosed type guys to get together to try to win the championship because I mean, if San Antonio doing it with those type of guys, you see Detroit doing it. I guess Indiana was looking at it like, "Hey, we need some some grimy guys too." Yeah, some blue collar guys, and and um, I know you brought up Jo and Artest. Like, I know another thing, you know, like that was just in the video. I don't know if I'm, you know, I don't want to jump around, but no, um, just uh, like their their relationship. Like, I didn't know that it was like going in. It was tumultuous like that. Like, they really didn't get down with right. each other. And I ain't know that. Neither. Like. I, you know, like J.O., was, he was, you know, adamant, like, you know, he didn't, you know, some of the stuff, you know, like, and I, re you know, I remember, like, I can remember all those Ron Artest antics, you know, he coming out with the True Warrior album and all this stuff, and he had the, you know, the panda cutting his head and all that stuff, like, I remember all that, and obviously, you you know, from the outside looking in, like, you don't even think that, you know, it's the guy on the team who's, you know, who got a specific goal in mind, like, I'm trying to accomplish this goal, and in his eyes, man, you out here playing around, you you know what I'm saying, you you singing, doing music, or you know whatever. You're not, you know, maybe in his eyes, 100% bought in on the goal that mm -hmm. he feel the team is trying to go to. Like I, like I said, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize that. And 
you know, it, it's it was just really interesting, you know, for them to you know to point that out, like, uh, so, and maybe how that manifested into some stuff uh, moving so, forward. So, do you think? And I'm just gonna play devil's advocate right here. Do you think Ron Ortez was ahead of his time, especially when you think about guys now in the league? They they work so hard and and they consider their brand and the and the branding aspect of their career. And when you think about even like just around that time, you know, Allen Iverson had came out with an album. Kobe had came out with an album. Jason Kidd was was you know singing on a couple songs. So. I, I, I miss Jason Kidd. I miss the Jason Kidd. Yeah, so yeah, the, uh, I forget the name of the app, but it was like a compilation. But you had a, a compilation of okay. just NBA guys trying to hand in music, trying to hand in different things, trying to you know initiate that whole aspect of I'm I'm a brand now. And you got older guys and hats off to Jermaine O'Neal, man. Just the the people that he had around him in his corner. Here you got a kid coming out of high school, South Carolina that you know mm -hmm. you can't even imagine what we were doing in high school to where you getting i mean school by the best and getting you know basically great information on how to be a leader how to be a leader of an nba franchise right off the bat and setting your mindset on look i'm not here to play around you know i'm here to accomplish some things to actually be great so hats mm -hmm. off to him in that aspect but do you think ron artest was ahead of his time basically trying to trying to work on his branding aspect um i mean I, i'm gonna say no for this reason because just from like going off the documentary like it seemed like our test was like taken away from his primary focus like i feel like like i you know like some of these other guys that you mentioned like maybe they did you know have you know like other interests involved but it was i don't want to say on the side but they took care of Man. you know like the, their team their team things first like so like i don't think that uh you know, like some of these other guys were, you know, like, well, I need time off so I can do this. It was like, you know, I'm going, you know, go to the gym, work hard, you know, put in this work. And then, you know, on the side, I'm going to, you know, work on my brand or, you know, try to, you know, score some marketing deals or or, or whatever, you you know, what have you. Like, because I got nothing against that. Like, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you got to, you ain't go, the ball ain't going to bounce forever. Right. You know, you ain't going to be able to do it. So, you you know, you have to prepare yourself for the best way possible. But then at the same time, you know, you know, you you paid to do a job. You know, you locked in on the goal. You know, you got 11 other guys or whatever, 14 other guys that's dependent on you. You know, you you got to, uh, you know, you owe them something too. So, so I ain't going to say he was really, like, ahead of his time. But, like, nah, like, he, you know. Ron Ron was yeah, wild. No, no, he was I mean, wild. I have to just throw it out there because, I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, and when you kind of look back at it, I'm just looking at Ron, the stuff that he's doing. I'm like, it's really no difference in what these guys are doing right now with trying to, you know, diversify their portfolio in different areas. But, I mean, you hit it right on the nose. Make your – you have to take care of your main thing. Let your main thing be yeah, your main yeah. thing. And Yeah, that's, that's all. Like, you know, like I think they brought up the instance where he, you know, he – Said he was going to a, a you know a funeral for a family member, and then he was at the Source right, Awards. Right. And, and so, and they said and he was, that's something that I and they got. said he was gone for like yeah, like I didn't even. I mean, I I guess I didn't know the backstory. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I didn't know that he, you know, like was you know told his team whatever. You know, I didn't know the reason that he was there. Like he right. you know he got didn't get permission to go or. And I believe I even think you know Jermaine O'Neal said that he was he was gone for like you know three four days. So one like he just went to the awards, mm -hmm. came back right. like you know you gone for like a week. Yeah. So you know so it's stuff like that like you know you you know you, I mean you know how it yeah, is. No, I mean you look at you looking to your teammates you know? to especially yeah with just you like I'm putting in this work. Yeah, yeah exactly. This work. If we gonna do this, let's do this because just like you want to leave yeah. and that's what they were just saying like you you talking about you need time off at the beginning of the season. Like, man, this, yeah. this you setting the tone, man, way off. You know what I mean? Because we got 82 mm -hmm. some games, and part of being a professional is being able to deal with that, doing the things that you don't, don't right. want to do. Like, you know, right. we're not paying you to put the ball in the hoop and hoop. Like, that's we know yeah. you're going to do that. We paying you for these yeah. other extracurricular things that we know y'all don't want to do. And that's what mm -hmm. separates you from everybody else if you're able to, to do it and then do it at that level. And plus, he had been a professional, man, in, in the league – one thing that has stood out for me was when they said he got traded, how they told him, I guess, when he went into the facility not to get off the bus to to go practice yeah. with the team. He was like, I'm doing it anyway. I'm going in there. I'm practicing. Right. But if the Indiana Pacer organization let him get out, out there and practice, 
then shame on them, mm-hmm. you know, because right then and there, you starting to, you know, set the set the tone, set set a wrong tone with him to to let him know mm-hmm. that, that 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 that's being allowed. And I would just think somebody like Larry Bird or Donnie Walsh would have stepped up and said something like, no, nah, we're not finna baby you unless they thought that he was actually the the piece. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know how it is, though. Talent, you know, <laughs> like you know, we, whatever we you know, it's, it's all, it, when, when you good, it's all good. You know, like you know, I, I mean, you think about professional sports. You think about guys like AI who had this, you know, toward the end of his career, he had this bad moniker about, you know, he, you know, he didn't work hard or whatever. I, I got a feeling he didn't do nothing different when he was winning the MVP in two thousand. Right. But you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In football, T.O., you know, T.O. is a cancer or whatever. It's like, no, nah, he always been a cancer. But when he's catching the passes, you know, you can you can overlook you can overlook some certain things from certain guys. Yeah. And so it was probably the same with Ron Artest. Uh, you know, he was one of the guys. I mean, obviously, you know, hands down, probably the best perimeter defender in the league at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a 20 point a game guy or close to it. So. I mean, it's like, nah, nah, don't, what is don't it? Get you know, twisted. Ron being Ron. Ron was a beast at 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 at, at his position. Just, I'm just saying that, by, and that you know, talent by but you know buys you a little little latitude sometimes. Yeah. You know, and for, you know, it's you know hard to say. You know that maybe that ain't the lesson you want to teach a kid growing mm-hmm. up, but it's it's one they're gonna find out quick. You know, if you can do something for somebody, they might be willing to you know look the other way for certain right, things. Right. So and so so that that was one that was one aspect. So Ron Artez. Man, let, let, let's kind of transition over to our boy Steven Jackson, man. I, I was just, I was, I was, man, grossly, I was grossly disappointed, man, in this guy. Um, for one, just, just, just kind of his his attitude towards this whole situation, his attitude now that he's a retired NBA champion, and for him to sit up and just have this persona, man, right now. It's just, it's sad. It's sad to look at. And I just feel like, man, just watching him, listening to him, like, dude, got, he, he got to he gotta get himself together, man. What, what, what was your take on Steven Jackson doing this whole interview? And then I'm going to give you my take. Well, like, I guess when I look back on it, like, I can remember when it happened, I was like, man, Steven Jackson was out there wilding. Like, because I can just remember seeing just the video, like, you – all you see is you just see an arm come through. Like he just he's swinging on any and everybody. But then also at the same time, like I, you know, I think about like what would I do if my teammate went in the stand? Right. And then like when you when you look at it like multiple times, like obviously Ron was wrong. Like I got an opinion on Ron going in in the stands, period. But like Ron was wrong for going in the stands. Mm-hmm. Period. Like I, you know, ain't nothing, you know, no excuse in that. But now he goes up there and he chases down a guy, the wrong guy, a guy who can, you know, he can freaking man. But then also when you look, it's other people kind of like attacking Ron. You know what I mean? Like swinging on Ron. So so if I see my friend essentially maybe, you know, in the, in the heat of the moment getting jumped. Right. You know, I don't know if you, you know, if you have the, you know, maybe the, you know, the emotional patience to, you know, say, oh, let me wait. Mm-hmm. And let me see, you know, see what's going to happen or see if they break it up or, you know, this fan don't know what he's doing. So, you know, and he just went up there with reckless abandon. Like, I'm, you know, I'm I'm hitting anybody not in the Pacer jersey. Like, when anybody, you know, if you ain't got a tank top on, you getting swung on. Like, that was, I felt like that was how he, and mm-hmm. I mean, it was wrong, but like, I, I kind of put myself in, like, in that situation. Like, if I, if I had a teammate go out there and do that, like, what would I do? Right. And then if I seen him, you know, obviously, I guess I would think that the first thing would be to kind of diffuse it or whatever, break it up. Mm-hmm. But then at some point, you know, it's, you know, now you, you know, it's almost it's every man for itself. Uh, you know, um, I don't know. I'll let you speak on. Uh, I know you said you want to speak on Steven's uh, point because, you know, it was a, there was another point that they brought up in the film just about like them, you know, like it was only like. They said it like a handful, maybe like three police officers yeah. was in the whole building. So, so, so go up, like, so, so going back to what we were just saying as far as uh, and I, I'm I'm just gonna share this out real quick, just so so folks, if folks want to jump in some of this stuff, man, uh, and kind of say they piece. But what I um, what what I my, my thoughts on on just uh going like what you just said as far as uh having somebody's back, like right off the bat, they even said it, even Reggie said it, like. For for basketball guys, man, when we hoop, 
it's gonna be some chippiness. It's gonna be some trash mm-hmm. talking. It's gonna be some, you know, some hard file, some some elbow swinging stuff that you know we we know we know a certain point to get to before it gets super physical. And I think a lot of times mm-hmm. that that's expressed. I think from Reggie Miller when he's basically just said like, you know. I'm good with the dust ups. That happen all of the time. Like people don't, right. you know, basketball players really don't want, don't, don't want to fight. Jalen Rose got the famous yeah. quote: "The she hold me back." You know what I'm saying? Just somebody <laughs> grab me, hold me back. Like I, right. so that that type of stuff happens. But um, one thing that I was just looking at was, you know, uh, the Stephen Jackson, just this persona of, you know, just this this goon, this street dude, just. He made a comment yeah. one time, and I just, I, I had to turn. I just like, really? So in the same vein, he was just saying when he got the call from Donnie Walsh and Larry Bird that he got traded to Indiana, he was like, you know, because I, I was on the block. I was I was on yeah. the block with my home. And, I, and I'm just like, dude, you, you if, if, if I think you just coming off a, cha- a championship with San Antonio, how you an NBA mm-hmm. champion talking about you on the block? I'm with my guys. I'm on the block. And, you know, I pick up the phone, Donnie and, and Larry. I put them on speaker. Like, what was so that right there just was, I was just like, man, dude, really? Then in the same, in the next interview, he like, you know, shoot, I, I'm just happy to, you know, I, this is what I do, man. I, I'm trying to get my, my family up out of this and my folks up out of this. But how are you trying to get somebody up out and yeah. you're going right back to the same place? Like, dude, you, your priorities just all messed up. And, He's another one that when you start to see that, yeah, his talent can get him to a certain point. But after a while, man, folks are going to be they folks are not going to want to deal with you because, you know, yeah. you they bringing you on basically for for the, for this enforcer role. You 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 make big shots, you play tough D, you that locker room guy, but at a certain point when, you know, when when you can't do all of that stuff, man, we can go find another we can go get another PJ PJ Tucker. Or we can go get another Tucker. Yeah guy that's younger and we yeah. don't have to put up with your mess so hey. mm-hmm. so that that just what that rubbed me the wrong way that he put that out there on on film that you know i get that you're talking about the past but man come on man you got to grow up with just that that whole aspect because uh if i'm mistaken i mean he was the only one out there man i smoke weed all day man we was smoking weed all day we was yeah. dude you and you an nba player man come on now like folks don't need to see that even if that's what you're doing you know right what I mean? right so, uh, so all right, so uh, they talked about um, St- uh, you said you saw Steven going there, he was wilding, and so we, we, we'll get caught up on and let's just talk about just the impact of that game. So, they play each other, conference rivalry, they know they're the two top teams in the east, they go into it. That actual game, I think Ron Ortez went off 17 points in the first half, he did his thing, he was out there killing, he set a tone like. I'm hurt, you know. They all they talked about mm-hmm. Ben Wallace losing his uh his brother that day before, so he went he went for the BS. So he ain't got time. Right. To, he probably didn't even really want to be out there. And would you have kept those guys out there at the end of the game, based on but it, the it, magnitude of that? Like, why would you keep those guys out there? And I I guess I thought about that too, but it seemed like the guys from both teams was out there too. Like it wasn't like one, you know what I mean? It wasn't like one team. <laughs> kept so so like i don't you know like i, I wonder like what was the the meaning on, on both teams like just to having like because it was this happened with like 50 seconds left in the game team point game early in the season right. so like i you know i i don't know like i don't i do know like it was a lot of guys on indiana that was hurt you know reggie was out um well they said the guy anthony johnson was out so you know like maybe they just the bench is depleted so you you know you keep a couple guys out there and then i also, at the same point, we talk about like just the um, just the button rivalry, like you know the the year before going to the conference finals, like maybe they was trying to send a message. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess like I'm wondering why Ben Wallace was out there, like or did the, you know what I mean? Like I can kind of see Indiana like they we winning, and you know let's just kind of like you you know like I just said like send a message, but you know let's you know I'm Detroit, Larry Brown, let's pack it up, man. It's it's over. Yeah, so and, and that, that just brings me back to a point where I was just thinking, like, you know, we, we have uh and even in the in the league, man, everybody is just so caught up and enamored with stats. Stats, you know. And I think going into I think it was that had to be like the seventh or the eighth game mm-hmm. that that these certain elite guys, your stars, that the, the people pay their tickets, pay for, for tickets to go see, 
to keep those guys out there so they can hit their number. They hitting their number, hitting their number no matter what. And I was just thinking to myself, like, why would you, again, why would you have somebody like Ben Wallace out there at the end? He known for really not hitting free throws like that, you know, and to mm-hmm. keep him out there, like, what what are you doing? Are you trying to send a message like, we're not going to throw the flag in on y'all? And that just sets up a whole a, a groundswell of knowing that, man, something can kick off. Just think if he turned his ankle or hurt yeah. his knee and you got him out there, you know? Yeah, I guess I, I you know, I don't, I, I just wanted like just the time, time and score, like why, you know, like I said, why Ben Wallace was out there. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, kind of gauge like if any of the other Detroit starters was out, you know, like actually in the game. Um, but like, uh, you know, I don't know, but <laughs> and I like, but like I, you know, and I still, like, I wonder, like, cause we all talk about, obviously, you know, Ron Artest running in there and he gets hit with a cup or with a beer. Mm-hmm. And you know, and it sets them all. But it's, I, I just find it interesting that you know Ben Wallace grabbed him by his neck and threw him 15 feet across the the right. earth. So so and, so that's what. I, and he was cool, <laughs> and he, you know, like the cooler heads prevail. Right. But you know, but now you get you know you, a solo cup come. You know what I'm saying? You get hit with it with a cup, and you know now you you know you ready to fight the world. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, I understand maybe it's a basketball fraternity and all this stuff. But also understand Ben Wallace is one of the strongest guys in the league, and Ron Artest know that, and maybe he ain't on no smoke. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I just wonder, like, you know, we, you know, we talk about certain things, like why, you know, why was you able to, you know, maintain your calm in that instance? Like, I, I might have been maybe much more or just as upset with that, especially figuring that nothing else has happened. It's like, man, you know, this guy grabbed me, throw me, and you know, I'm cool. I'm just gonna lay down. But now. You know the cup set them off, so I don't. You know, I just like I find that that aspect of the story interesting. It's like, okay, you know, you got some sense, right. man. You know, you 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 know, what I'm saying you was able to process. You know, you was able to kind of you know operate. You know, w- within chaos. You know, in, in you know in some way, like you know what because, I mean. Uh, and and it's funny, and, and you know, I look back at it for folks that's that's chiming in right now, that, that's getting a chance. We're talking about the Malice in the Palace documentary on Netflix. Um, if you come in and you just not ch- uh, tuning in, man, hit the like button, hit the share button. You know, if you want to make a comment, just, you know, comment on this, man. I got uh, Sly Willis from SIU Basketball, man. My, my my good my good friend, my good teammate, man. Been knowing this guy almost 20 some years. We just, you know, when we saw this, we said we, we had to uh, kind of break this down. So, um, but one thing I liked about Ron Ortiz, and, and it's good to show that, that he, he was learning from some of the strategies that, they were giving him in his counseling classes, you know? So he, mm-hmm. he he's, I'm a count to five. I'm a lay back. I'm a relax a little bit on this table, even though the table was not the place to, uh, to, you know, to operate right there, which, you know, Ben Wallace kind of pointed out that that, that seemed more disrespectful than anything you like. Yeah. I, found that, I thought that was interesting when he said that, like, I guess, you know, I don't know, but like, I didn't, that didn't bother me at all. Like if a guy like laid on the scores mm-hmm. table, I mean, I guess maybe it's in our house or something, but yeah. like, like I just thought that was that was interesting that that bothered you know that bothered yeah. him like it really but, I mean, it, you know he he brought he made a bring but, it up but it, but it kind of showed that I mean he he's a he's a he 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 may be a purist of the game to where you know you know you don't do yeah. it that's just like in baseball and not flipping the the bat or doing certain things uh, that you know will show somebody up having good sportsmanship but that's that's funny mm-hmm. that he was able to point that out like. Man, I thought the fire. I thought him laying on the scores table was more disrespectful than filing yeah. me with a minute mm-hmm. or something to go in the game. And and to like, I looked at it. I feel like the foul wasn't even that hard. Did I, you pay it? Like, I, it wasn't even. It wasn't even that hard of a foul. Even, like, I went back and looked even at going, it. That that wasn't even a flagrant. No, nah, like it was. I mean, in no era, you know, I had it like to say, like, if, if a foul is a, you know, it's this soft era now, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, he. He pushed him like he got, you know, he got by a guy and he pushed him a little bit. I guess, you know, maybe if he was in the air or something, maybe he felt some kind of way about it. But I've definitely seen like more egregious fouls, like, right. like you know, for it to, you know, for that to be the foul to kind of kick this whole thing off and, mm-hmm. you know, have us talking about it, you know, almost 20 years later. Yeah. It's like, you know, see, he brought up the fact that, I mean, again, Ben Wallace had lost his brother for folks that hadn't seen it yet. We yeah. Some spoilers in here, but he had lost his brother going into the game so again he wasn't on the bs he wanted to probably get the game over with and move on and you know call it a day uh and you know uh, i think 
Steven Jackson pointed out, I guess something had happened throughout the game to where Ron Ortez was upset about a foul maybe that didn't get called, and he wanted to get his lick back. Mm-hmm. And Stephen A. Yeah. Was, uh, Jamal Tinsley went over to Ron Ortez and say, you know, now you can get your lick back. And Stephen A. Mm-hmm. pointed out that, you know, why would you say something like to that to, that, to this man during this time? Let's get off this floor. Let's right. move on. You know this guy ain't rap tight. You know, what, what, what were right. your thoughts on that point? Yeah, like I thought that was interesting. Like I didn't know. Like, I didn't know if it was, I didn't know what the retribution was for. Like, I didn't know if it was something, like, I kind of assumed it was for something from a different game, but maybe it was something that happened earlier in the game. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, I, I like you said, I, I thought that was funny, though, you know, for uh, kind of for uh, Steven Jackson to say, like, man, why you tell him that? Like, you know, like, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> like, you know, he don't, you know, he the last person you need to kind of gas up or whatever. But, uh, like I said, I don't know, yeah, I didn't know if it was, it was something from the, you know, that game itself. Mm-hmm. And, but then I guess at the same time, maybe that's why, like, he was so mad or like, you know, maybe the whole game had been chippy, you know, like I, you know, I didn't really get it. You know, I don't remember like even, like, I know I didn't watch the game live. Like I remember, you know, like seeing, you know, about what happened on like sports and all that stuff. So you really don't, you know, you really don't get in to dive into like maybe what happened during the game. So, you know, maybe throughout the game, like, uh, you know, you know, our test was, you know, handing out cheap right. shots or, you know, I mean, you know, I guess you know how a game is. You know, this guy, every time he come past me, maybe, you know, he elbowed me in the show. You know, just, you know what I'm saying, just make his presence felt in, you know, in a way I don't appreciate. And Ben Wallace, you know, he had enough. Obviously, he, you know, he dealing with whatever he dealing with in his personal life. You know, you don't, you don't know about that. And mm-hmm. that's all, all it takes is, you know, I guess a push in the shoulders to. <laughs> Man, so. All right, so we were talking about the scores table, the the, the situation with uh, uh, Ben Wallace, Ron Ortez, right after the hard foul. Ron Ortez goes over to the scores table, lays down. He's trying to cope with um, dealing with all of the chaos around him with the, with the chippiness, decides to lay on the table, count to five, using some strategies that someone was telling him to do in his counseling sessions. Ben Wallace begins to throw headbands, wristbands, all these mm-hmm. different things, in that direction setting them off and it was a good point that was made when they basically just said you know if fans are coming again the, it was a blowout all the fans had left the the season ticket holders the diehards left the folks in the cheap seats started coming down so you already know once they mm-hmm. come down more trash talking folks are been probably up there drinking all night now they want to yeah it's the fourth quarter this was before you know now they got the rules where they don't sell liquor in the fourth you know like in the fourth quarter like mm-hmm. in games like that you know i don't think they had that back then so you know they was all up right. and they was ready to go go ahead yeah because uh, I, I, like, yeah, I didn't know that i didn't know that that stuff like that happens but that's a good point because now all right so now all this stuff is happening and let's talk about the splash First, what 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 were your first takes on her and the uh, the the interview from the fan perspective that they got sucker punched, and then also hearing from I think they had Jermaine O'Neal, they had Reggie Miller, kind of talking about the uh, the splash and what what started to happen afterwards when everything started to uh, the the negative uh, interest started coming right at the players and not from what from the fans' point of view. Yeah, well, you know, like I, some of the fans that they interview, I guess maybe all of the fans they inter- that they interview, like it just seemed, you know, they almost they, they even brought up how like they may have been trying to be opportunistic, saying like, oh, maybe we can get paid off of this, right. and um, you know, all this stuff. So like it, I, you know, it's, it just seemed like you know, there's there's this entitlement that comes from from observers, uh, you know, in general, and they feel like they have the right to do or say or. I guess even in this case, just approach, you know, a player, you know, especially in a, you know, in a hostile environment like that. Um, it just seemed, you know, like crazy, like just even like the guy who actually, when they finally figured out, you know, they interviewed the guy who actually started it. Mm-hmm. Cause I think they even asked him like, you know, what would he do differently or, you know, all this stuff. And he didn't say like, I wouldn't throw the beer or nothing like that. Like he said, I would have tripped him when he came up there. Like, you know, it's it's just like, you know. No remorse like, for starting a, yeah, a, a, a like whole he just, trend you know, of events he, that's been kicked off from the yeah, decision he, was, he, he was proud of it. Like, he was, he was like, this was, they they claimed the fame almost. You know, like, even the other guy who got, I think he got, was the guy who may have got punched by Jermaine O'Neal. Like, they showed him being interviewed, you know, like, right, right after the, um, right, right after the incident. 
And, you know, it's just, you know, I don't know, like, you know, I, I put myself in a situation. I know if I just got punched in the face, like, I'm not going to be sitting in front of a news camera. Right. Talking to, you know, you know, I'm going to either, if I am seriously hurt, I'm going to go get medical attention. Or I'm mm -hmm. going to be so mad that, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, broadcast, be broadcast on the evening news. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think the <laughs> adrenaline from, from just the excitement of just what happened, again, folks probably drinking, not in their right state of mind to where, you know, even during that time, somebody maybe may be told, man, stay down. If you stay down, you can get mm -hmm. hurt. You can you can sell this, ride this. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. Like right then and there, they so amped up the fact that man, we was one of the guys that we made it to the floor. We thought we mm -hmm. threw blows with him. We and he on he on camera, and the the security in the uh, palace had to just usher them out. Like man, get from in front of the camera, man. Like yeah. just go. You know what I mean? Because y'all making a fool of yourself. And I just think during that time, it was just kind of like. And then, but you know, like you see, like he on the camera saying all this stuff. And then, like two minutes later, now he on a stretch and a neck brace. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> like, like, what happened, man? Like, just a week ago, like, what you <laughs> Called me an ambulance, put me in a neck brace. It's starting to hurt yeah. right now. So I got to yeah. get escorted out. Mm hmm. I was yeah, like, man, this is. It seemed it seemed very very uh, coincidental. That's I, I'll say that much. Oh yeah, and I just think back to where we were just saying the uh, now you know a heated rival a heated rivalry like this, and you only get three armed security guards, police officers, monitoring twenty thousand people in this type of atmosphere. I just think that they will they were well uh, underprepared for something like this to kick off. Even let's just say they did get it under control. How can three people stop twenty thousand? From just being rowdy, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like it's just, like that's just, gonna send them home. That's just bad planning. Period. Like, forget about. Let's throw a rivalry out the window. Whatever. If you got twenty thousand people in one tight space, you know, and you train, you know, you know, you're gonna need to secure it. Like that. Like that's just you know that's bad logistics, bad planning. Um, in general, like just to think about, like you said, three people, and even one of the officers, you know, kind of mentioned like. You know, like one of these, you know, like if, they, if one of these people grab my gun or, oh, you know, like yeah. it, it ain't nothing I can do. Like, and it, like, that's something that I didn't even, like I said, I didn't even consider. One, I didn't even consider like the police or security presence, like in general, but especially like for, you know, an event like that to break out or, you know, for a fight to break out at an event like that. Yeah. And then you just, like I said, just in, in general, like, you know, like I, I think about like concerts or, exactly. you know, things that I've been to and it's like, man, like, and to say, like, man, it's a 20,000 20, people here, and it's only three officers there. Like, how, how could you even, you know, even just fathom that? Like, how, how are you going to even tell somebody to do something knowing that there's only just three of y'all, you know? And, yeah. and not have the, the wherewithal to just be like, man, what if something break out, you know, things ain't going right? Like, we just need to have some sort, some type of backup plan, yeah. you know? And I guess, mate, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say hindsight is twenty twenty, but you just figure like they should have been more than, than they had. Yeah. Like obviously, you, you know, it's not like you're gonna have a one for one thing, but, yeah. but it, you know, it's just like, or you know, I don't know. You would think it would be some guys out, you know, some officers outside that can, you know, kind of quickly get inside, like you know, mm -hmm. you know, directing traffic or something like. So, so let's just talk about real quick as far as the. Uh even the, the two teams trying to trying to police themselves like that just seemed like that 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 was just chaos all together with them even trying to get out of there you know uh, yeah. uh, uh trying and to make it to the back you got uh the security and the police officers that that were there was trying to uh uh, uh, uh pepper spray reggie reggie miller and ron yeah. ortez out of all these people coming on the floor you want to mm -hmm. arrest these guys as opposed to just saying, look, they, these are the visitors. Let's just get them out of here. Let's just take them to the mm -hmm. back, see if this will calm down. Because they made a good point that, you know, if Detroit, Ben Wallace, whoever standing in the stands doing this or, or yelling or screaming, the crowd is going to amp up. So mm -hmm. just remove the players from the, from the court right off the bat and then try to settle things down. And I think it was never even a plan to figure out how we're going to exit these guys to get them up out of here. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, obviously it was it was the the whole event was unprecedented. So like they didn't, you know, nobody knew what to do. Mm -hmm. Um, like I, you know, I ain't gonna say I found it interesting, but like I took note how like once guys went into the stands, like obviously like the the rivalry or the the fight between the two teams, like that disappeared. Right. 
Right. Like they was just like, okay, we, you know what I'm saying? We all got to get out of here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you seen, seen guys like Rasheed Wallace kind of helping the few, you know, like trying to pull people off mm -hmm. of, you know, Indiana Pacers players and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it's, it was, uh, you know, you see how, you know, these guys have, I guess, you know, how they mentioned the, just the brotherhood of the team. I mean, of the, you know, players in the league, that their fraternity, how they stuck together in that regard. But then just getting them out and then, you, you know, you just have all these people who just, you know, for lack of a better term, just acting stupid. Like, you know, you know, throwing popcorn and, pop, you know, just, you know, like I, I don't even, I don't even understand that, like the reasoning behind it. It's, it's almost like a, like, you know, like, like a circus act. Like, a, you know, you know, you know, it makes you think of what, what certain people think of like athletes and entertainers. Like, man, you just here, you just, you just here to please me. And when you don't, like, I get to punish you. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's it. And, and it just, and when they, when they talked about the guy, man, unscrewing the chair, picking the chair up. Yeah, the chair in the stands, like, like, what are you gonna get from that? As opposed to just being like, you know, just, just that's when it just became just, just way out of control. Ice cold facts. Yeah. What's going like, on? Like, you know, just for the right for like, cause I, you know, obviously our test he climbs over the scores table, and so like I can I can kind of understand, kind of a melee like in that area, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever you know, fans around him kind of pile on or whatever in that area. But like once they get back down to the court and then they get to the to the gangway or whatever you know trying to exit toward the locker room and you still got because these aren't the same people that was over there that are upset you know these are these are different people that is just like you know I, it's you know i'm gonna be upset too like i'm gonna do you know like that's that's just very just interesting and you know almost says a lot about us as a culture mm -hmm. like just as a you know as a people as, as a collective like we kind of just you know you know, you see something, you know, monkey see, monkey right, do, so right. to speak. Like, and, you know, it's, and it was, it's just was like, it was like a shocking and alarming. Like, you mentioned that chair. Like, they showed that, I mean, that chair came flying, you know, hard. And I'm just, that wasn't no, yeah. you, you know, no, it wasn't no light that. plastic. You had to unscrew that chair. Yeah, that's like, those chairs somebody that's, had a yeah. socket <laughs> ring. <laughs> somebody yeah. was, they was, they was so, waiting. So, so they made the transition into the locker rooms, and then all of a sudden you saw, uh, you know, uh, everything kind of getting diffused a little bit. And now you got to go into the foxhole now with your team. So now you you taking the mm -hmm. time to reflect after all, everything, the the adrenaline kind of coming down. You you heard, uh, uh, you know, Ron Ortez lean over to Steven Jackson. And it just, again, it, yeah. it plays back to where this guy was at mentally to where he made the point saying, oh, we going to get in trouble. You know, like to 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 yeah. just think like, okay, what well, what type of trouble are you talking about? Are you talking about going to jail, right? Or you talking about being punished by the league? Like, like what type what type of trouble are you talking about? But then on top of that, the uh, the person that seemed like he was gonna lose the most, and not just Reggie, because I mean, I, I I guarantee everybody was dis Reggie was disappointed. But then you had Jermaine O'Neal step up and just be like, man, I'm tired of the shenanigans. Like, we gonna mm -hmm. have to throw down. So. Let, let's talk about that for a second. Like, what, what did you think? Do you think that that was – it's hard to say was it a, the proper move, but I just think he was right in that instance to just, look, you didn't kick all of this off. I need to get at you right now. Like, we're going to have to shoot one. Yeah, I, I think thing. it was – I think it just – fine. you know, like, I think he was finally just fed up. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I really think that, you know, like, obviously, I think we, we touched on earlier, you know, the, like their history. And, and it's interesting, like, I have a feeling like Ron Artest – had no idea that Jermaine O'Neal felt the way Jermaine O'Neal felt about him. You know what I mean? Like, I like I can honestly think that, you know, Jermaine O'Neal just in all, you know, all his time is just like, man, this dude, you know, like, Ron, he gonna run again, doing, you know what I'm saying? And this is really building up in Jermaine. And, you know, Ron Artest is just... Uh, Jermaine was know. probably trying to be as professional as he could. Yeah. To just, right. like, like, I'm, I'm trying, trying you know, to win. I'm trying to do this for Reg. I'm trying right. to be the face of this organization. Even my little petty differences... I can push them uh, you know, I'm not gonna mess so it I, can, up. I can hoop with this dude. Right. And then, you know, and then this guy, you know, he goes in the stand, punches a fan, you know, starts just, you know, <clears throat> this whole, you know, this whole brouhaha, for lack of a better term. And then we get in the locker room, and he, like a kindergarten, and he turned and asked me, Am I, are we going to get in trouble? Right. right. Like, yeah, you in trouble, trouble now. Not matter of fact, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know, like, I, I've heard that story before. I've heard Steven Jackson tell that story before. And, I, like, that, you know, that that's all, that, that's just mind-boggling that, like, where his mind was at that time. Like, that was that was his thought. Like, are we going to get mm -hmm. in, you know, in trouble? Right. 
Because you know, again, I, I think that all of those guys were, were kind of, and I know Reggie right off the bat was probably like, "Look, this is my last ride," and I'm guaranteed that he had those mm-hmm. conversations probably with the high with the higher ups in the organization. Like, "Look, this is our the window is closed, and let's do this for Reggie," you know. And that's that's that mm-hmm. leadership again that Jermaine is showing that it's just kind of like, "Look, I'm gonna be professional as possible. I'm gonna be the face in this organization once he leave." Let's you know, let's let's try to do this for him because we know right off the bat because at the time they had the best record in the league, so our chances are there to face them in the Eastern Conference Finals, and then right. now we we put our faith in the hands of somebody else. And keep in mind, this is at a time David Stern was the 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 judge and the executioner. You know, mm-hmm. he wasn't going to you know any type of arbitrary judges or voting for for anything. I'm making this decision. Right off the bat, and it goes back ice cold facts. He just pointed out too that you know the the fans pay the bills of the NBA. You know, mm-hmm. saw that when when the whole thing broke down with the with the uh, with with the China debates with them and and you know with them you know basically saying we're not going to play off in China because of these human rights violations and different things mm-hmm. that was going on even back then. We're not going to even discuss or even talk about. Uh, what the fans are doing because what, what's going to happen if the fans boycott us for something that you guys do? Mm-hmm. Nah, we finna we finna put this hammer right. down, and I think once they decided to ban him for a year, it was just kind of like, man, what 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 do we where do we go from here? You know. Mm-hmm. So I mean, what, what you what you think of that? Do you think that the punishment was was granted for a year, and even the other punishments for those other guys? I thought I, like I felt like I felt like all the punishments were. You know, pretty much just like I feel like Ron, you know, he like he he got a just punishment, whatever the remainder of the season or whatever, I guess ended up being, you know, 70, 72 game. Um, obviously, he, you know, his reaction started everything. Um, I felt like Steven Jackson's was just um, I, you know, I could even have seen him getting more than he got just, you know, just because kind of, you know, he was at least appeared to be, you know, reckless, at least from what, you know, the information I have at, had at that time. Like, you know, he just, like, he went out there, you know, he went out there first, probably, he probably hit somebody first before Ron, Ron did. Think, the if way it think looks, Ron it. grabbed the guy first, and when the when the, when the, when the oh. drink came in his face, then that's when... Uh, yeah, that's like, when okay, and that was it, that was it, he, seen it. Yeah, he threw another drink, so, so yeah, okay, you know, but, I mean, like I said, Steve was just, you know, he's a, you know, I guess he's just a, He's a passionate guy. Like I guess that's you know he's like so that's just how he how he rolled. But um, like yeah, I didn't see no problems with any of the suspensions. Like they, you know, that's why they had to be. And I didn't see a problem because they tried to kind of point out that um, even though you know I didn't like how you know David Stern's um, demeanor, um, but I didn't have a problem with like I didn't feel the need for like a third party arbiter like to come in there. Like, you know, like he's the commissioner of the league, so to speak. He's the, you know, the head of the food chain and you do something. He in that position for for, for him to make those type of decisions when it's Yeah, like that's, you know, that's why he's there. Like, you know, like, I I think they asked him, though, like, uh, was the decision unanimous? And he's like, yeah, one zero. Like, you know, like, you know, he he didn't have to, I don't know. He could have expressed that, you know, like that that felt like he was, you you know, he took the opportunity to kind of maybe boost himself up unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. You know, especially you know, it was a this was a serious time, like, but, um, but yeah, like, and you got to send a message that this can't happen again. I'm trying to think, like, um, I meant to look it up, but what you know, like, what Vernon Maxwell got when he went to stand, okay, okay. Uh, you know what I mean, like, and that was maybe a good 15 years before that. So, um, you know, you just you you can't like you can't have that mm-hmm. like. You know, under any circumstances, uh, like you can't just obviously, you know, the fans have to be policed and controlled to a certain degree as well. But like you can't have them, you know, like we can't have them going into the stands. Like So Vernon Maxwell was suspended 10 games. So you got 10 games for fighting and they. Ten versus 70. Yeah, but I mean, but the 70, then it caused. But it was the, the impact was different. Yeah, the end. Like I think Vernon Maxwell, he just went up there and maybe. Sp- I don't think he hit a guy. I think he just did he. Sp- or I don't know. I don't know so if he ball, ball, ball hit a guy. Sports say before Malice in the Palace, we had Vernon Maxwell going into the stands to fight a fan, uh, and so and then you know. At least it was one on one. At the very least. Like, yeah, <laughs> but, and, and like I said, this was unprecedented at the time. So the uh, the ten game suspension, but 
Now you look at you go from ten games to just one person going, but and then the you know the 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 TV cameras and then I want to kind of talk about just that 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 demonization of of a black image, a black man's image. Oh, from definitely. The media once it started to come out, you know, and and you start to see the the media games that they play, the 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 thug, you know, thug uh, Monica, yeah, reckless, and they throw those those catchphrases out there, basically just to say, you know. Uh, um, if you just, you know, if you just in some bubble, you see this, you automatically know we're talking about a black athlete, you know, and mm-hmm. then you start to see those clips back then. And, and hindsight is twenty twenty. When we go back, you don't see the turned up version of Stephen A. He was trying his best to, uh, you know, stay neutral, but 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 sway the sway his opinion a little bit to the the media side. And I like mm-hmm. what Kenny Smith basically said is that. You know, he went out on the limb because, again, it goes back to where, you know, we talk about Stephen A. and and all of his antics and that shtick. It's like uh, Kenny Smith is a player. Mm-hmm. He's going to ride with the he players. Part of the, no, he part of the fraternity yeah. right off the bat. And he was just like, nothing is, is said with the fans. You know, like we, mm-hmm. we ain't even talking about if, if the fan don't throw nothing, we don't have this situation. We'll be talking mm-hmm. about the technicals and the flagrants that the Pacers – and the, the, the Pistons have to have between each other right. looking forward to what the finals are going to look like as opposed to this fan throwing something, you know. So that that was my whole thing. It's just kind of like no no one is really talking about that. And then you start talking about that black that black man's image that we see so much with the media game. So what, I mean, what do you think about that when you saw that? Yeah, like even, um, like, you know, you talk about that whole, the thug, you know, that thug label, um, you know, it's, you know, like a lot of people think it's, you know, it's cold speech, you know what I'm saying? You know what they really want to say. Mm-hmm. And, but, and, you know, like we, you know, we seen it, you know, you fast forward it, you know, kind of what, what the Kaepernick situation came out. Like, it's, it's like, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't fit in the box or, you know, kind of behave in a way, not even, not even, and I don't want to say you misbehaving and I, I hate to use the term behave anyway, like they're children, but. But if you don't operate in the way that they feel you should operate, then then you are this, you know, this thug or this, you know, mm-hmm. this detrimental character. And, and it just so happens that these these people, these characters who don't operate in the way they operate are always black. Like, you know what I mean? Like if, if right. you know, if a, if, a, if, a, if a white athlete kind of steps out the box, I'm not going to say that he's not punished or there's, you know, there's no consequences. But like he's 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 judged as. You know as an individual case so to speak mm-hmm. it's not like that's the whole team or that's the whole league or you know what i mean but like but once you have like some of these black athletes that may that may i don't, I don't even want to say act out but that you know they behave or they they perform an action in a way that they don't feel that you know kind of fits fits the norm or you know fits the you know i don't know how you're supposed to be now you know you're a thug and everybody that's associated with you is also a thug in fact, the league is a thug. You know, yeah. the, you know the league is enabling. You know, it's just, you know, right. it, it's, it's almost like you know, you got one this one instance that happened, and it's you know very isolated. You got maybe one guy that went went into a stands like, like it's not like this. You know, this happens all the time. But the whole league is thugs, and mm-hmm. you know they implemented the silly dress code, which was. But there like, was a, but it was a point that was made that you know you got hockey players that fight on a regular basis and they encourage the fighting, but yeah. you never heard the, the talk of even, you know, uh, uh, that, that, you know, that that's thuggish behavior or, you know, yeah, like that. The, that's just, that that's just sport part, is, that's part, that's part of going to a hockey match, yeah. a hockey game. So throw down, throw down your gloves and let's get it on. Like, yeah. that's I mean, even though that's, even though it's, that's in between players, but still like if, if, if that was to happen, if, if at a basketball game, it was the potential for, you know, a, in, a in guy between the popcorn fight. break, and, in yeah, between the like timeout, you know, like it was you, one fight a game. Like you know that, you know that, you know that wouldn't fly with the general public. Man, so yeah, so that's why I'm just like, man, I, I didn't, I didn't like that as far as like you just start to see the same things that went back almost 15 years ago that's still going on today with the the, mm. the media tricks that they play, and you have to be in tune with it so you can just catch it and just see like, oh, see, I just. I just saw what they just did right there, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and it tends to happen. So, you know, so that was one thing that, that kind of stood out. So it says uh, uh, on December 8th, Oakland County prosecutors charged five Indiana 
players, all right, and five fans with assault and battery. Okay, months of legal ha uh, a haggling followed. The players eventually pleaded no contest, and only Green ended up serving jail time. So and it and it goes back to even when they tried to interview him, they didn't really put the pressure on him. You had a guy designated to try to find out all of the different people that, I mean, tons of camera. And I think now, mm -hmm. as soon as you hit a parking lot at, at one of these games, you on video, you on camera yeah. pulling up to, to these venues. And so now you got to go frame by frame trying to figure out who did what. And they just was just talking about that was just tons of information that they just had to kind of process that, that, you know, I, I just, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that job, man. Yeah, and I didn't realize, like, and you know, just to talk about, like, you know, the league. I don't, you know, I don't know if it was the league or the media or whoever, but you you didn't hear about like um, charges going against fans, mm -hmm. like, or even their involvement in it. Like, that was never broadcast. That was never really reported. At least, you know, not to my memory. Like you said about this one, you know, the one guy who threw it. You know, he 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 did some time, mm -hmm. and but you know, it, rightfully so. But it never came up on a constant. Right real on sports right. center on fox on all of these different mm -hmm. channels right just you know like obviously like you know you know there's like obviously everybody played a role and, and it was you know it wasn't just the players like i'm you know i'm not gonna you know absolve them from you know kind of their role you know in this in this incident but the instigators you know definitely was, was the one guy who went to jail and you know and nobody nobody like i said i didn't hear about that until i watched this uh till i watched the documentary that that a guy went to jail or that it was even like multiple people that were charged. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's, you know, like I felt like the the prosecutor or, you know, I don't know who, you know, what his actual role was, you know, the guy they were interviewed that was from the, I guess the Oakland County um, prosecutor's office. Mm -hmm. um, he seemed, you know, to be very objective, and, you know, you know, in his viewing of the, of the incident, uh, just, you know, kind of reviewing all the information and, you know, going over everything like, you know, Hey, like this is, you know, this was a, you know, a big fight. Like it wasn't just, you know, this wasn't a one-sided affair. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I think that it was probably unfair to the guys. I'm pretty sure that they felt some kind of way about it. Like for years, you know, leading up to, especially, you know, right around, you know, right after it happened, like, Hey, like, I, you know, like we were provoked, like this wasn't just, you know, some type, mm -hmm. you know, some mob activity, you know, that we were just, you know, picking on fans, you know, mm -hmm. so so now I just saying just like in, in just in reflection that, uh, you know, the window started to close right after that for Indiana. Um, it just talked about in 2005, they ended up losing in the first round to New Jersey. Uh, and then for the next four years, uh, shoot, man, they, 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 they was a lottery team after that, you mm -hmm. know, not really reaching that, that point again to where they can have some type of success. And then you look at people like uh, Stephen A., uh, I mean, not Stephen A. Stephen Jackson and um, uh, Ron Artest going off to play. One playing for Golden State, having a nice career. Golden State. Then some. Uh, Ron Artest going to play for the Lakers, winning the championship, and mm -hmm. then had nerve to uh, say how he quit on those guys the next year because he wanted his retirement papers and he wanted to mm -hmm. do all of that. You know, going into that season with them. So I just thought that man, his career could have just went a, a whole nother way. Um, he was able to get it back on track, but mm -hmm. he never reached that peak to where, you know, where he could have really been like a staple that people say, you know, as soon as you go to New, if you from New York, your, your, uh, your last ride, you become a Nick, try to see if you can do what you can for, for them and ride off in the sunset. He never was, you know, able to get that opportunity. Right. Yeah. But like you said, he got his championship. And he, I think, you know, when he, um, they even brought it up in a documentary, like when he was, when he won his championship, he probably kind of did, you know, his version or, you know, his tried to make amends, like, well, you know, best way. I think he brought up, like, you know, his time in Indiana, how, you know, he kind of failed those guys, failed, you know, Jermaine O'Neal and, in, in, um, you know, specifically or whatever. So um, it's just like, I guess so, you know, maybe he had grown, you know, in that aspect where he can, you know, recognize, you know, kind of the error of his ways, but, also, at you know, at the same time, like you said, like, you know, just never couldn't get it back right. And, you know, they even brought up, you know, thinking how Donnie Walsh talked about, you know, how he felt like Jermaine O'Neal probably took like the biggest hit. Yeah. Just for, you know, like he was, he was like all NBA guy for, you know, like they, first team, all NBA guy. Like, and, you know, just, I mean, we all, you know, we all know how, 
you know, perception goes. So, you know, if the if the league, if, if a team don't want to get behind you, if the league don't want to get behind you as that guy, then, you know, you can kind of, you know, get forgotten about. Uh, actually, I listened to another um, podcast with Jermaine O'Neal on it. And, he, you know, he talked about, I think, the following year, how he was a starter in an all-star team, mm-hmm. on an all-star team um, for the Eastern Conference. And, he, you know, he went to the all-star game. And he said there was no pictures of him anywhere. See? Like, you know, so saying, they, they you know, exactly they would not had, get behind him. Yeah, like so, you know, he was voted, you know, he was voted in as a starter, and like, mm-hmm. every, you know, you know, like the, you know, you know, he said, I, you know, I guess, you know, there are pictures of everybody that's on the team everywhere, and he said, you know, there was no mention of him, you know, anywhere, and so like this was, you know, the league trying to distance itself right. from him from that event, and so I'm sure, you know, his career, you know, took a, I, you know, I don't know how big of a hit, but took a, you know, took a hit from that. Um, I'll, you know, obviously you got like other, you know other you know money making opportunities you know in terms you know off the court deals and stuff i'm sure like a lot of you know people right. didn't want to back them or you know you know distance yeah, themselves out, from them. on, on so much money you know and it's yeah. like you know again going back to when we say making your your main thing your main thing this kid mm-hmm. came out of high school probably folks probably didn't think he was gonna last you know not even past that stint in uh portland in portland yeah to even get to that point to where you could be a face yeah. of a franchise so now here you are then 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 it was the same draft kobe was in mm-hmm. playing playing right alongside had his same opportunities and probably wanted to be mentioned in those same conversations but never really got got the opportunity so just re- reflecting back on the punishments round our test was suspended 73 games 13 postseason games, and he was charged with misdemeanor assault and battery. Steven Jackson suspended 30 games, charged with misdemeanor assault and battery. Jermaine O'Neal suspended 25, uh, but penalty was reduced through the arbitra- uh, arbitration through for 15 games, charged with two counts of misdemeanor assault and battery. And I didn't like how Steven Jackson got up there and was just like, I ain't, I ain't up there finna kiss, you know, kiss ass. I ain't finna do this mm-hmm. and that. And it's just like, dog, you, again, you being selfish to where – you know, you not look less than to make sure you covering your butt, you know. Yeah. But he's just that that kitty mentality to where he has to keep it real. Keeping it real. Right. You know. I just I didn't I didn't like that he portrayed nah. that. Uh, uh Anthony Johnson suspended five games and charged with misdemeanor assault and battery. Uh David Harrison, I'm not even sure who that guy was. I guess that's one of the fans. Charged with misdemeanor. Nah, he's a, he played. Battery. He's okay. a player. David Harris, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben Wallace suspended six. Chauncey suspended one. Reggie suspended one. Eldon Campbell was out there. Derek Eldon Coleman. Campbell? Er, er, Eldon Campbell. Derek Coleman was suspended one game. So these guys were still out there. They must have got suspended for leaving the bench. Leaving the bench, I guess, maybe. Yeah. John Green was convicted of misdemeanor assault and battery and sentenced to 30 days in jail and two years probation. Do you think that that was justified or do you think it should have been a more severe punishment? No, nah, I mean that was justified. Like, I mean, he ain't finna. Yeah, I mean, I can't. He ain't, I can't send the dude up the river for, for throwing a cup. Like, I mean, I, you know, like, I, 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 you but know, you just we, started a melee though for throwing the. Yeah, cup. I guess. Like, in front I mean, of twenty thousand like, people. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be mad if he did. Like, you know, I'm not gonna lose no sleep if they gave him three years or something like that. But, right, right, right. but yeah, yeah saying you know, I don't know. So uh, I guess the guy that was punched that uh, that Jermaine O'Neal hit, and Ron O'Neal, Charlie uh, 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 Haddon, I guess he was in the documentary too. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, filed a civil suit uh, against uh, mm-hmm. uh, Anthony Johnson O'Neal and the Pacers. Uh, o- O'Neal was ordered to pay uh, what's this? Uh, Fifteen, well, sixteen eighty six in restitution. Uh, who pleaded? Uh, okay, Hayden, who pleaded no contest to violating a local ordinance against entering a performance space and receive a sentence of two years probation, a hundred hours of community service and 10 straight weeks in the, in the county work program, man, he looked like he got hit more than, than the guy that threw the, the, that threw the, um, the drink. Oh yeah. Cause he, he, uh, I think Jermaine O'Neal got almost a pretty much a clean shot off on him. Yeah, but I mean, by him coming into that space, I guess that was justified by yeah, him. he was uh, he was on the court. Yeah, so he was like, I got to protect myself. He out here to fight with his fist balled up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They was, you know, what else you out here to do? <laughs> Where did he come from? Though? <laughs> you ain't out to, 
You ain't out here to rebound. Yeah, this dude came down from the <laughs> stands, <laughs> man, and balled his yeah. fist up. Like, for what? Yeah. Man, man, people are crazy. Oh, Ron Artest, man. man. Sly, how tall are you? You what? You 6'7", right? Mm-hmm. And Ron Artest, I ain't as big as Artest. I was just finna say, Ron Artest, like 275, man. <laughs> man, big, big yeah. old, big old dude. Mm-hmm. Man, defensive yeah, player, like, yeah. type cat grabbing rebounds, and you gonna run up on him? Right for no, you know, for no reason. Any man, <laughs> <laughs> any man already. Oh man, so yeah, so these guys, man, they, they, they did a number. So in all, do you recommend this documentary for like who? Who do you recommend this for? Because I know sports fans looking at this probably like, man, we, we kind of know this history. We don't need to kind of relive right. it. But it's like kind of what we were both were saying. A lot of this stuff we don't know. I mean, we go year in and year out, man. We we dive into these sports and, and we forget things so quickly. Um, do you recommend this movie uh, to anybody? And then if you do, who, who do you recommend uh, to watch this? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a definitely a good watch. I definitely recommend going to see it. I mean, if you're just a casual sports fan and if you don't know, and, and all if all you know is that Ron Artest went into the stands and it started the brawl, like I definitely suggest you go just check, you know, check it out. And if if you're a casual sports fan and you don't know anything about the brawl, you never even heard of it. Maybe you know you're a young kid. Like I, you know, like I said, this was 15, 16 years ago. So you got probably have some people who are you know diehard fans now who may have been you know just you know young kids or maybe not even born when this was uh you know when this event happened. So I definitely just recommend that just to to these to young kids out there and obviously just to see that it's. You know, it's it's two sides to every story, mm. or really three sides, three so sides. they say. You know what I mean? So you know, just like this is obviously told from a, you know another perspective that we haven't seen, that we haven't had the privilege of you know seeing. We didn't we didn't have the opportunity really to hear from the players. We didn't have the opportunity to hear from the prosecutors involved. Mm. You know, like I, I felt like that was a uh, you know some some big insight. You know, of the documentary, just hearing you know hearing their side, hearing their input. Mm. Of, you know what they you know what they saw what they had to go through to kind of you know sift through you know all of the rubbish to you know kind of dole out punishment and you know get things back in order so mm-hmm. um like i said it's a, it's a good watch for you know all sports fans um you know obviously if you just thumbing through you know if you're a big documentary buff you know you like to just you know learn about new information um i definitely recommend you checking it out mm-hmm. Well, in closing, man, I mean, what, what all do you have uh, that you want to kind of promote? You want to get some 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 plugs in? I think this was cool, man. We got to do this more often, man. I mean, you you got to hit me the more stuff that's that's going on out here, so we can kind of review, man. I enjoy having this conversation with you, man. Miss you, man. Miss talking to you. And like I said, I just knew that we were going to kind of hit things off, and I want to hear your perspective on this. So, uh, what, what you have work, what you working on, what you got going on? Just kind of give give the folks that that, that tune into this a little. Uh, snapshot into your world. Oh man, well you know I ain't, I'll be honest, man. I'm a, I'm a regular Joe Schmo, man. I ain't, I ain't got nothing to sell and promote. Maybe next time though, you know I might have, you know, what I'm saying I'm, I might have something for you, man. You know, what I'm saying like I might steal your swag bag or something, but you know, uh, <laughs> uh no, you put me on the spot right there with that one. But no, nah, it's just uh, it's just you know, it's just like you said, great just to catch up, man. Opportunity to talk to you and. Like you said, you know, maybe we, you know, we'll bounce some ideas offline, man. And, mm-hmm. you know, some other stuff out there that, you know, that I've been watching, something I just, you know, actually kind of tuned into, man. I wanted to get your thoughts on. So we are, maybe we could do this with a, with another uh, little series or something. Bet, 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 man. I appreciate you, man. And in closing, I want to say uh, make sure that, uh, you know, follow me on all my social media platforms. I'm going to put the, uh, the little promo at the end of this video um, and kind of just, you know, tap into all of that. Um, but for the most part, man, again, in closing, I want to say just be be grateful for, for each sunrise and, and work hard to earn each sunset. So um, Sly Willis, SIU Basketball, man, appreciate you chiming in with me. And, uh, man, I, I, I'll holler at you. All right, BT. Good talking to you, bro. All right. Peace. All right.